Hello, uh, my name is Pastor Mike, uh, pastor at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Elizabeth, Illinois. Our devotion for today is entitled Becoming Perfect, and it is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7, verses 7 through 25. And we will focus on verse number 18, which reads, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Our sinful nature is our great flaw. It is this nature that makes it impossible to reach God in the way that we consider most natural, by altering ourselves so we stop doing what's wrong and start doing what's according to God's will. Now, Paul doesn't mean that we're incapable of doing some good things. But here in this text, we're talking about the good, the very nature of God, which allows us to be like him in devotion and compassion. When we want it, struggle to achieve it, and wish to be it with all of our hearts, we then realize that we can't. I find myself in a tragic state of split personality. Within is the urge and the desire to do good. However, I find that I have another urge, one that is at odds with the law that I profess is correct. I find that, Nothing good dwells within me. Paul writes about this in verse number 18. The sin is a part of me. I can't free myself from it. It holds me prisoner, and I can't be what I want to be, namely, God's free, happy, and obedient child. It's this strange flaw inside me that is referred to as the flesh which is the desire to do evil, to be selfish. It is that egotistical laziness that exists in my nature, what we usually simply refer to as the fall. No law can correct this. Paul clarifies that when I take the law seriously, it only gets worse. When I become meticulous and try to reveal sin, in its innermost recesses and somehow remove the desire to do evil, that's when the temptation comes to life. When I live under the law and believe that the condition to come to God is to succeed in becoming blameless and unpunishable in his presence, that's when my sin begins to overflow. It seeps out all over. I notice that selfishness exists in everything that I do, as does self-centeredness, pride, and impurity. When I acknowledge this truth, I end up in the misery that Paul describes here in this text. Oh, poor me, who could save me from this wretched body? Now, there are those who want to be made righteous through their own good works. But this is impossible. The truth is that when God is allowed to lead and direct us, he shows us that through his Holy Spirit that on this earth sin is everywhere. This is exactly why God provides a different way into his house than the way of morality and our excellence. This is the way that the Apostle Paul points us to, when while speaking of our own weaknesses, he bursts out into joy. Thanks be to God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Yes, Lord, thanks be to you for seeing hope in our hopelessness. We thank you for the wonderful gift for when you sent your son Jesus and gave us the righteousness that exists only with you. 
We also thank you that you will someday completely free us from our sins and for having patience with us now in the meantime. Thank you for allowing us to be your children through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. See you next time.